is using live industry web technologies to enhance existing applications. Um, let me just scoot this a little bit to the side. Okay, my name is Rita Prather. I'm a software product manager at National Instruments, and I have a focus on web technologies user interfaces in uh, real time, but just for this session we're going to be covering um, web technologies. Uh, presenting with me a little bit later is Matthias. Matthias, will you wave? Uh, so he is going to present later on in the session, just to, so it's not me telling you what's awesome about our web technologies, but he can uh, you know, vouch for it a little bit. So before we start, I just wanted to ground us in what is the problem we're trying to solve here. So we do live in a distributed world. I'm advancing my slides with my phone. It's just we're living in the future. Um, so we have a lot of different needs coming up. Different people at different levels of the company want to see some information about the test system or the measurement system that you're running. And this could be all the way from technicians or operators to the top. Uh, leadership in your company. Everybody wants to see something, some results. And it'd be crazy to install an application on each person's machine in order to serve their, their needs. We're just not in that world anymore. And so uh, to meet this need, a lot of people are turning to the web. So everybody has a browser. Everybody can use that. And you don't have to install a special program on somebody's device. So people are saying, why can't we just use a browser to get this need filled? Um, so this doesn't quite get us all the way there, though. We have, if you want to build a web ap application, you have to know something about HTML, JavaScript. Uh, you have to know how to um, implement security. You have to know how to host an application. All these things are not something that you necessarily learn in school as an engineer or a scientist. So it, sort of exacerbates our need for a higher level starting point. And that is what we have with the LabVIEW NXG web module. So this is something that just came out about a year ago. Um, it lets you build web applications and unlike previous iterations of uh, NI's web technology, you do not have to use a plugin or an installer with this. It's a pure web application. So now we know the problem, and now we know the tool that I'm trying to explain how we can solve the problem with. Um, but let's describe, you know, put a little bit more context around when you would actually need a web application. So you might say, hey, I want to remotely monitor um, something, some test system, some control system. Uh, maybe you can't actually be in the same room as where this system is running. Um, I've, I've talked to a few people who are doing uh, radioactive isotope testing, and for obvious reasons, they can't be in the same room as where this test is going on. So maybe that's your situation. Or maybe um, it's just a giant factory floor. You don't want to always have to go to the factory floor to get some information about this test system. So that would be a remote monitoring use case. And this is just a really simple example of a web BI that's doing some kind of tracking of temperature data. I have a few limits that I'm setting um, to do some logic in the browser and then I can look at a few different sites. So this is just a simple representation of a remote monitoring application. Maybe you're thinking, well, I'd, I'd actually like to remotely control this test system from somewhere else. So um, one example is this is another simple case of I just want to start an application remotely, run a test, and see the data that comes back, see if it passed or failed. Um, this is actually a web BI that we built to control the PXI chassis remotely. Um, so we're doing a little filter test on it. Maybe you have a completely different need where you actually need a consistent way of entering <coughs> data into a database. Maybe you have some technicians that are all doing tests. So you want to capture their test results and have them send it back to a database. This is what I'm calling data entry. Um, and this has actually been used by G Systems today with web BIs. They built um, one web application where you're entering data and then you can actually see the results back from the database in a browser. 
This makes it really easy on those technicians. They don't have to have a special application installed. They can just pull up the URL for this um, web app. And uh, G Systems actually wrote a white paper on their experience with this. You can go to their website and read all about it. Uh, it's a good read. <coughs> and there's this other um, area for data exploration. Say you don't need to monitor something live. Maybe you just want a simple application to let you look back through previously acquired data. That's um, totally a, a valid use case for using web APIs. So, this is a, an example of, uh, of simply walking through, um, looking back through the historical data of a solar panel. This is another web yeah, we built. And just to help prove that it's not just me saying that this is awesome, we already have uh, some partners and other people in the community using the web module. Um, we're pretty excited about you know, they didn't have to go out and learn web technologies in order to um, get this job done. They have new powers, new superpowers for the web um, that they just use their lab use skills for. And so when I talk about the web module, I do like to break it up into three different components and try to wrap our minds around what's going on. Um, so we have web VIs. A lot of people have probably heard the word web VI before. Um, that's one part of it. But there's also data services to make your web VI useful. Um, and then there's the web server or the hosting aspect to uh, using the web module. Um, you've got to put your web application somewhere so you can share it with someone. So I'm just going to start off with talking about web VIs. And when you piece all these parts together in sort of a system map, it plays out like this. So we're going to talk about the web VI that runs on the client side. So when I say client, it's the browser. The browser is running on any device that can run a browser. So laptops, tablets, smartphones, anything that can run a browser is the client. And that's where the web VI runs. Are there any compatibility issues among the browsers that we need to be aware of? Yes, so good question. Uh, the question was, are there compatibility issues with what browsers support web VIs? Um, the main big one is that they don't support Internet Explorer. Microsoft isn't supporting Internet Explorer. So we are also not going to um, be able to keep up that support, but we do support Edge, which is Microsoft's replacement, uh, Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. So the big one is pretty much. Okay. So WebVI is just like a normal live UVI. It has a front panel. Um, special about this front panel is that it uses HTML widgets. So these are actually uh, different from the ones you might find on the regular VI in Lab Unix Sheet, um, since they're built out of HTML5. Uh, some new ones that we've added since the last time we talked about the web module in iWeek is uh, we added a tree control and a dialog box. Um, and it doesn't stop here. If you wanted to import a web widget that you have except for some reason, maybe you have that expertise at your company, you want to import those, or you find some cool widget on the web that you want to reuse in your web VI, it, it, the panel is open enough to be able to use new widgets. And then um, you're in the room for the last session, you saw a little bit more of this, um, but this is flexible layout. This is something new in 3.1 that we added. Um, it allows you to build one web VI and it will uh, lay out one way on the desktop environment and if you open it the same web VI on a phone, it'll automatically resize to fit that device. So this is pretty much table stakes in the web world, but LabVIEW has never done this before, so we're pretty excited about this. I'll show a little bit more about like, how easy that configuration is. Um, so going along with the panel, obviously you have to have a block diagram. We have uh, commonly available LabVIEW functions for the block diagram of the Web VI. Something new that we added uh, in the fall was events and properties. Um, and then we also have communication APIs um, to go along with it, which I'm going to talk about in more detail next. Uh, what's new this year as far as communication APIs goes, we've added support for WebSockets. 
And then just to peel back the curtain a little bit on what's going on behind the scene, yes, WebVI is just LabVIEW, but the magic of a WebVI is that we're taking the front panel and compiling it into HTML and CSS under the hood, and then for the block diagram, we're compiling that down into um, a text language called VI Assembly, and that is what actually runs in the browser using our JavaScript runtime engine, which is called Vireo. So none of that is anything you have to really be familiar with in order to be successful with the web module, but it could be interesting, especially if you're trying to uh, take web VIs to the next level and customize them a little bit. Um, but if you're like, ooh, don't tell me about web technologies, then just pretend I never said this. This is just behind the curtain. And then speaking of extending web VIs beyond what they do today, we added support for the JavaScript library interface in 3.0 and uh, so shorthand JSLI. This is what allows you to extend the functionality of web VIs um, to anything else that's in the web. So this is an example of a visualization library we brought in to run it in a web VI. Uh, you can also use the JSLI to do custom uh, functions on the block diagram instead. But it's just an analogy, um, it's analogous to calling C in LabVIEW, but this time we're calling it JavaScript. So if you're especially interested, or maybe you do have background in web technology, uh, this could get really interesting. You can take LabVIEW to a whole new world that it's never been. Um, and what is also really exciting about this is that um, all it takes is a couple people in the community to build these JavaScript libraries that run in a web VI. And then that can get shared across multiple projects, and it you know, grows the functionality of Web VIs way beyond where it is today. So, pretty excited about this. So, I'm going to uh, talk through a few <coughs> demos. Um, I recorded these ahead of time because I was worried about time and not getting you guys out for lunch um, in a timely manner. So, uh, there's a couple videos in here that I'm going to narrate over, and they go a little fast, so buckle up. Will they be available today? So the slides are available after NIV, uh, so these will be available to look through at your own pace after NIV can. Okay, so this is uh, just an example of building a web VI. I have a web application in my project. Um, the .gvi web is the web VI. I have a normal panel, familiar with building panels, I have uh, graphs and charts and uh, numerics and all kinds of good stuff. Diagram looks familiar. Uh, traditional LabVIEW programming concepts in here. Um, a few communication APIs. So all familiar. I can also peel back the curtain and look at the HTML and CSS behind the scenes if I wanted to. That's just kind of an FYI that's there. Um, and then to show you a little bit more about flexible layout, this is where you go in to change the configuration from absolute to flexible. <coughs> and then when I go to drop down a HTML widget, it shows me a container. I'm going to resize like normal. And then it's, when I drop down the next one, it's going to show me <coughs> insertion points for where I can drop the next one. And Still some configuration that I can do, like normal, changing the font. Um, I can change it so that maybe I don't want my graph to resize because I, I want to make sure people can see the data in it. So I can set that. I can change around the width to its spacing how I want it. And then I can run this in the browser to see what it looks like. So once it loads, I'll make sure this is how I want it to look. I'll see that if the screen gets small enough, it'll wrap. And it's really simple to make that. So that's just Web VI's a little bit on flexible layout. Um, if you want to get your hands on this later, there's a, a few hands-on sessions. There's something on the expo floor where you can try this out. Um, yeah, do you have any questions for right now? There's support for uh, automating uh, the test of a, uh, a web VI, or you do that with third-party uh, uh, tools like Selenium or similar. 
So the question was, are there any tools for automating the testing of a web BI? And I don't know of any yet. There might be some in the community. Um, I'm not sure if we, if um, the unit test framework are ported over, um, but none built in. All right, so we covered Web BI's. Now we're going to talk about the data services. This is where it gets really interesting. We look at our, our map of how these things come together. We've covered what's going on on the client side. Now we're going to talk about how do you bridge the gap between an application that's running on a device and the Web UI. And so this is where we talk about the data service options. We have the System Link API, we have Clavi Web Services, and we now have WebSockets supported. Um, and this is, whenever we talk about using Labby and Labby and Ishii together, this is the glue that makes that happen. So we have the System Link API, which is included with the web module. Don't have to buy a System Link server in order to use this API. Um, on your application side, which uh, is you know probably the application that you're running today, maybe it's running on uh, the desktop, uh, a DAC application you can think of. Um, you can add System Link APIs there in LabVIEW or LabVIEW index sheet. And then on the Web BI side, you have the same thing mirrored on the Web BI block diagram. For LabVIEW web services, maybe you're already using web services, or maybe you want to call third-party RESTful web services. Um, that's what you would use on the application side. And then on the Web BI side, you would be using the, the HTTP client API. And then for WebSockets, uh, maybe you're al already using the WebSocket toolkit from the community, or you have third-party WebSockets that you're wanting to connect up to, use that on the application side, and then use the, the new WebSocket client API on the web BI side. So HTTP also HTTPS? The question was, does HTTP client API also handle HTTPS? And the answer is yes. And then this, these are the main three that I like to talk about, but the web is a crazy, fast-moving world, and so it's possible that there are other mechanisms for uh, transferring data back and forth that we haven't uncovered yet, but can be supported through the JavaScript library interface, most likely. So then just to draw the picture of what the system link API looks like, these are what it looks like on the block diagram. Pretty simple, open, read, write, close configuration that you're used to with WebView. <coughs> With the HTTP client API, this is what the palette looks like in your typical git post put delete functions. And, but one thing that I did want to mention about uh, using LabVIEW web services in conjunction with web BIs is that there is a frustration that comes along the way that I want to warn you about. Um, and that's when you're developing the web BI on top of, um, or to talk to your LabVIEW web services, they're actually on different servers. So the LabVIEW web services are running on the LabVIEW web server, and your web BI is running in the web server that's in NXG. And so they don't like to talk to each other. And that's on purpose. There are security impl uh, implications that um, it, this is a good thing, that they don't just automatically talk to each other. But it can make for a frustrating experience if you don't know about it ahead of time. Um, so there's a little something you can do to get around it. Basically, you're, you have to tell the LabVIEW web server um, to whitelist the LabVIEW NXG web server. And then for, for certain type of requests, it'll be happy. Um, but this is something that we're looking into improving in the future. We want to make it so that the web servers are unified and then you basically get rid of this the cores problem. So that's during Web BI development. If you can get past that and go to deployment, there's a trick you can do to make this work, and then you're fine. Um, but it basically means you bundle your web application, your web BI, with your LabVIEW web services. And then when they're deployed, they are running on the same server. They're running on the LabVIEW web server, and then it's all happy. So this is just a warning I wanted to give this room especially about using LabVIEW web services with web BIs. Now there's also the WebSocket Client API. Uh, we like WebSockets because unlike the other methods, it'll establish, establish a continuous link between client and server. And it makes for better um, performance, especially for streaming use cases. Um, so we've added the WebSocket Client API. It looks like this. 
Again, open read write close, really simple to use. On the um, application side, maybe you'd use a WebSocket toolkit from Media Mongrels. I know there are others out there. Um, that's what you'd be using on the server side, and this is what you'd use it on the client side. The question was, can you get encrypted data? Um, the encryption and the security is all on the server side. So you would, if you can get it uh, secured on that server side, then the client side will fall suit and it will be secure. Yes, that's a good point. When you're comparing all these together and trying to decide when you should use what, um, this is kind of how I would lay out the pros and cons. Um, the System Link API is a pretty user friendly, it's the same thing that happens on the application side as the web UI side that makes, makes it easy to use. Um, it uh, integrates well with the NI web server and system link server and system link cloud if you're using that. Um, the downside <coughs> of that is it doesn't support um, all of the kinds of uh, data that you can transfer over. So today it's tags and messages. In the future we'd like to also support the file API but this is where it is today. Um, Labby Web Services in the HTTP API. The pro to this is you might already be using it, so you should just keep using that. Um, and the, but the con is that it could be hard to debug during Web UI deployment or development, like I described earlier. Um, and then for WebSockets, again, a pro to this, you might already be using WebSockets, so keep using them. Um, the API on the web UI side is really easy to use, so that's a pro. Um, and again, the low latency streaming use case is well suited for WebSockets. Um, the cons are that you have to implement security yourself if the toolkit you're using doesn't support it already. So that's one to think about. Okay, I'm going to continue on this demo. Um, I'm going to build off of the web UI I previously showed and but right now I'm going to add in the data services. So I'm going to use the System Link API and I'm going to start with uh, using it in Labby 2017 and then show you what it looks like talking to the web UI <coughs> side of it. Um, so this one goes a little fast, let's see if we can keep up. So this is Labby 2017, dropping down System Link API, um, again doing the open, read, write, close, flow. Um, I'm connecting to the server with this first one. You obviously don't want to put your credentials on the block diagram because that's bad practice, but hey, this is just a demo. Um, then I'm saying, uh, or I'm opening a connection to the tag, so I have to give it a name and a data type, and then I'm going to write to that tag, just random data for now, and close it out. So that's all you have to do on the lobby side of things. Um, what this looks like on the Lab Unix she side of things with the web UI, it's basically mirrors. So open, open tag, read, close it out. And so when I go to run the Lab 2017 code, so I'm now writing random data to that tag, then I'll run my web UI and show that the, the connection has been established, flexible layout is still working. And that's all you really have to do to stitch together LabVIEW and LabVIEW sheet. But yeah. Okay, any questions right now about data services before we keep blasting on? Okay. How fast the uh, timing, uh, uh, how's the performance of So the performance for the system link API, I, so I think this changes every time we update it and it gets better, but the last I heard was about once a second. It's pretty typical. Uh, for WebSockets, it's much faster. I don't even know if we have a metric on that. Um, there's a demo on the Expo floor that you can check out. It'll show you lag time. It's much faster than that. So. Okay, so I'm gonna keep moving. All right, so we've built the Web UI. We've talked about data services. Now we have to build this and host it somewhere so we can share it with people. So for that, we're going to talk about the NI web server. Um, this is the last little piece of our puzzle. And uh, when I say server, it's really any network PC. Uh, so pretty simple in that way. Uh, the NI web server is something that comes with the web module. It has this nice configuration utility to walk you through, okay, are you trying to make this open to other people? Are you trying to use security? It'll help you walk through that. 
um, and it's built on industry standards, so it's not anything crazy that IT might balk at. Um, but you, this is where you manage security, you uh, enable encryption, you say this user can do view this application, but this user can only view this application, all that good stuff. And so when we talk about deploying, um, I'm going to fly through these just so we have time to get to Matthias's uh, demo, but you have to think about where you're actually going to host your application, and there's a few options that you have. So you actually can host a web application on an edge node, such as a compact Rio. That works. Uh, you have to consider what that means for putting load on whatever that edge node is. So if you have a compact Rio with not a lot of resources, maybe you think twice before putting a web application on there that 100 different people are going to view. Um, but this is a fine pattern for if maybe you just want a simple UI to look and configure your compact Rio. Um, you can also put your web application on a centralized node and have multiple different hardware assets talking to the one place. That kind of separates out the load being on your edge nodes and puts it all on one dedicated server. Um, it does require you to have that dedicated server. Um, and that's not always an option, so uh, for that, I would recommend considering system on cloud. You can host your web application in the cloud, have all your devices talking up there. Um, it's secure. We handle security for you, um, and then that way you don't have to have that extra network PC in the mix. So, when we look at the workflow for actually building the application, you're done creating a web UI. You click the camera button for building a web application. This fits out a bunch of files, and then you take those files, you copy and paste them onto the NI web server or onto any other server that you might be using. And then from there, depending on how you have your server, server set up, um, external folks can connect and ping that URL and then see your web UI. So continuing with this <coughs> pre-recorded demo, I am going to build a package. I'm actually going to host this on System Link Cloud. I uh, tell it I do want it to run on a web server, and I want this to be a package, not a package installer. Give it all the other details it needs, and I build it. I'll go find where this is located on disk, and I'll take that, and I'll log into System Link Cloud. Let me go back to the home page, go to web apps, and then I'll upload my package, and it is happy with me. And then from here, I can set up different security settings. Um, I can also um, modify this to where I'm sharing with other people. So I can choose everyone, which makes it public, or I can send it directly to somebody's email address and only share with them, or I can keep it private to myself. So those are the, the options for hosting my system. And there's a ton of opportunities to do this workflow yourself. On the expo floor, there's an opportunity. We have some hands-ons later today. Um, lots of opportunity to see this for yourself. OK. If I don't have any questions right now, I'm going to hand this over to Matthias so he can describe his experience. All right. Thank you, Rita. So my name is Matthias. I work at uh, Studio Buzz, an alliance partner company based in, in Quebec. Um, we have uh, many customers. Uh, uh, what we do for many customers are kind of uh, project, project management applications, so desktop application. There are databases involved, and they have to manage their customers, their projects, even their finances. And uh, in the past years, we have uh, more open and open requests to have uh, also web applications, kind of a customer portal where they can log in and see some information, or an employee portal where the employee can log in and uh, also <coughs> maybe uh, uh, enter the, the time entries and things like that. So we have many requests to, to have web applications. and. We are not web developers, so uh, what we've done in the past was uh, basically subcontracting to uh, web developers this, this part. Um, so when uh, LabVIEW and XJ uh, came out with the web VIs, uh, we <coughs> saw quite the opportunity of, of paying web developers like magically. Um, so uh, we decided to try out uh, LabVIEW and XJ web VIs for, uh, for new customer projects that uh, 
at React and to, to invest the time to try this out and see if we were able to make it work for a real uh, customer project. And I can give you the conclusion already. Yes, it works. And I can tell you today that uh, maybe it works well. It's powerful. It's secure. And you can today use the view uh, and its your module to develop uh, uh, web applications for productions and for real customers. So tomorrow I'm going to give a presentation about my, my experience on that. I'm going to show a demo, and not only show a demo, you're going to be able to download the entire code base of what I'm going to show you uh, with a 31 pages detailed with me uh, how to proceed and to get started with the, the project. And the project that I will uh, show tomorrow is basically a test station that runs tests. Uh, it can be written in a view or whatever, but what you need to uh, What's, what's important is that this test station stores test results into a database. Um, so we have a database on the server machine that stores the data. And uh, we have some mapping web services uh, that are going to communicate with the database and uh, also with the web VIs running in the browser. So it makes an intermediate layer between the database and the, and the browser. Uh, so when the web application requests some information, the web services will be able to request the database and send back the proper information to the client. And of course, we have a web server to uh, host the web pages. So if we take an higher level, we have a local network, the test station, and the database, of course, stay behind the firewall. We don't want to expose that to the internet. And uh, the web services and the web server are exposed on the internet, and that's where the web VIs communicate to. I'm going to show you a very quick demo of the uh, web application. So of course we want a secure space where not anyone can log in. So uh, we will log in with some credentials that are basically stored in the database. So uh, at this point we request the database, is this user allowed to access the system? Um, the user can access to some account information, first name, last name, you can change this information and of course it's going to be uh, stored uh, in, the, in the database in the persistent menu. So if we go back to the end page, uh, the website is immediately updated with the uh, new name. Um, so uh, of course you can go to the test results part of this uh, application. And here we have so five test stations that are registered to our system and saving uh, results in the database. Um, so we are leveraging the new uh, data grid control that allows you to see all the results to put maybe by uh, type of results or by test uh, stations. So that's pretty much it. That, that's a very simple application, but it gives you really the base of what you need to get started to create a web application that involves security, logging, database, and a lot of web services. Yes? So that's built in the data, the library that we control, uh, which is part of MXG, desktop, or what we have. So I didn't have to do anything for that. Uh, so, if you want to start developing your own web application, I, work, I have one advice. Come to see my application, my presentation, then download the project, try it, uh, implement it yourself, and you will have really the, the base to get started on your own. Uh, save you probably weeks of troubleshooting and research and all these security issues and the cores that uh, we can mention. Uh, I try to solve that already or for you in a very detailed project. So, much more uh, to learn more. Thank you. All right, and then just to wrap up with our last five minutes, I want to talk about what's coming in the future. And before I do that, I do want to take a brief look back at our past. This is all that's happened in just a year. I'm personally really excited about this because last year when I presented our roadmap for Web BIs, um, I showed a bunch of things that all came true in our the versions that we released this fall and then uh, added in a week this year. It was really exciting. Um, so we introduced events and properties. That was a big thing that was missing from last year that we heard about. Uh, we introduced the JavaScript library interface. We released system with cloud. 
Um, we added flexible layout in this current version. We have the WebSocket support. We've um, done a, a little bit of usability improvements that we got feedback on. We've added new web controls. So a lot has happened in the last year. Um, it's really exciting. And it's a, a lot of thanks to everybody who gave feedback because they helped us um, drive to this, uh, all these improvements. Um, so actually what's coming is we are going to have better support for waveforms. Uh, we're going to add variant support. We've heard a lot about that. Uh, we're looking at a file API so that if you don't just want to see latest value information, uh, like tags and messages or, um, or data from a web service, we want to actually have a, a first class way of seeing historical data that you save to a file. Maybe you have a um, have some test results that you just want to quickly pull up in a web BI, or maybe you have uh, some troubleshooting log that you want to pull up in a web BI. That, that's kind of what we have in mind when we think about the file API. Um, and then again, like I said earlier, we do want to improve that workflow with LabVIEW web services um, and building a web BI on top of it. So we're looking at how to solve that use case as well. Um, and then I just also wanted to plug this nifty uh, feedback tool that's built into LabVIEW NXG, so it's really easy to give us feedback. It's this little chat bubble. Um, you can click on that and submit uh, feedback. That way it goes straight to R&D. Uh, and actually, we had a one specific feature that came through this feedback mechanism that made it into the product. It was, um, when you build a web UI, it shows the LabVIEW icon in the browser by default. So someone gave us a feedback like, hey, I would rather customize that icon to be something company specific, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, we got that feedback, took a look at it, and said, yeah, of course, we can fix that, and did it. And it was in the, the next available release. So this is really powerful. We are really listening. So I encourage you to give that feedback. Um, and then just to talk about how this is packaged, this is a LabVIEW NXG um, module. As you learned, you can use it in tandem with a lot of the applications we have today, but it does install on top of NXG. Um, you get web APIs, you get those uh, data communication APIs, including the system link API, you have the NI web server, and you have system link cloud uh, bundled in with it, as long as you stay active on the system. <coughs> That's everything you get. Um, and I would encourage you to check out these links. Uh, download it, evaluate it. If you're an Alliance partner, which most of you are, then you already have access to the software through your Alliance partner software suite. Um, but this is a little bit extra information for you. Um, and then as far as the rest of this week, we have a hands-on this afternoon. We have a software test lab with Foro Beta going on all this afternoon. Um, I'm basically doing a rerun of this same content, but uh, for the non-alliance partners later today. Um, and then we have a customizing our web UI session, which Darren and Milan are, are presenting on, which is taking web UIs one step further and, and doing some really awesome things with it. Um, Matias also has his session, as he talked about, and then another chance for a hands-on on Thursday. So I encourage you to check all that out. And before you go, take the survey, but also take the paper survey that we passed around. Um, we are using this to gather your feedback on what you've learned today and how we can improve the web launch in the future. And I am going to bribe you and um, offer a prize to some lucky winners uh, if you fill out this survey and get it back to us. So please do that. And that is it. Thank you for attending.